the Jackson Cloud. I'm Jamin. And I'm Casey. And I'm Olivia. And we are continuing our series throughout Genesis. And today we find ourselves on a very intriguing story. All right. There's one thing I know how to do. Maybe you guys know how to. The um, You put the, the yarn in your... And then you, oh, the cat's cradle. Yeah. No, that's not the one I know. Yeah, it is. Not the one I know how to do. No, no, no. I know exactly what you're doing with your fingers. It's the cat's cradle. Well, I was doing Jacob's Ladder, but... I, the oh, are those the same thing? That's right. They have two names, right? Jacob's Ladder, which is based on a story from the Bible, in which Jacob... Yes, they're different, like, portions, but it's the same <laughs> thing. When you're doing it, you do both of them. So, what? the... Cat's cradle is like the starting position, and then Jacob's ladder is one of the positions you can get it to. But if you get it to Jacob's ladder, then you need a second person in order to keep it going. That's right. I can only do Cat's cradle then, because I always stop. Actually, I do Jamin's cradle, because I do this thing in the middle of it that no one else does. That's right. Follow me online for more yarn tips. Okay, so um, Jacob's, Jacob's ladder, anybody remember the story in the Bible? No. Tis no. a story of a dream Jacob had. This isn't like shoots and ladders, right? Mm, no. Uh, so, in uh, in some of the stories that we've seen throughout the Bible so far, think of Hagar, right? Hagar's life comes falling apart. She's got to run away, and that's where she runs into God at her like base moment. Everything's falling apart. Trying to think of a word. Deepest depths. A low point? There, there we go. This is a low point. And then God shows up and brings it to a high point, right? Jacob's now going to kind of walk into his own. What happens to Hagar? What brings her to the high point? God shows up as the angel of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Speaks into her life. And then she is names, this back in the forest? Yeah. Oh, okay. She's in the wilderness, and then she finds a well of, of, yes. of water there. And, and then that, God promises to take care of her. And... Yeah. Jacob kind of gets his own story like that. So in his story so far, he has deceived people around him. He has stolen stuff uh, and legally gotten away with it. If it wasn't for those meddling kids. And, then, and now he's kind of ending up in his own forest his own low point because yeah. he can't he can't stay at home anymore right because his brother's very Gonna angry kill him. yeah his his brother has basically decided at this point his mom overheard is his brother is waiting for dad to die so that he can kill jacob because he's he's ticked that his birthright and his blessing if those aren't the same thing or are two different things have both been stolen from him by and the same person. By the same person. One wasn't stolen, though. One was sold. They were both legally-ish, deceptively... It was trickery. Yeah. None of us would call it moral, to say the least. Casey's, I still, I Casey's still, gray lines are... <laughs> well, no, I would still say the birthright was a legal transaction. Well, sure, the Bible would agree with you, but is it a right legal transaction? I would say yes. It was still true. Is it a moral legal transaction? Yes, he agreed to it. It okay. was still Don't make trickery. agreements with Casey ever. All right. So. Well, no, like, <laughs> was it equitable? No. But was it still, I would say, moral and legal? I would say yes. All right. Well, to each his own, I suppose. Don't make agreements with him. All right. Um, so he ends up at his low point. He has to leave home. He's now headed to uh, his uncle's place to try to find a wife over there. Because the blessings of God upon the Abrahamic line and all of Abraham's descendants are now fully, squarely on Jacob. Jacob ain't going to have any descendants because Jacob ain't got no wife. I almost said wives, which is going to be the case. <laughs> but he's got no wife, so... He mom sends him away uh, to a place to go find a wife uh, in the family. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. And he came to a certain place 
and stayed there that night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head, ah, what a wonderful pillow, uh, and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. All right, but well, we could also say not maybe just a ladder, but we could also say a flight of steps. So what, does this paint any pictures for you? The staircase is better than the ladder because, I mean, I'm just thinking a wood rickety ladder and I'm like, <laughs> what? Taking it a little what? too close to serious painting here. Yeah, we could say steps. There's a stairway to heaven. I'm not at all surprised that that song came up. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just kind it of might waiting be, for it. Too. It might be based on this right here. It's a stairway to heaven. Where have mm -hmm. we seen something like a stairway to heaven before in Genesis? I mean, Tower of Babel? Yeah. Tower of Babel is a ziggurat. Ziggurats were essentially stairways to heaven. They were attempts to make a stairs high enough that it had its tops up there where heaven and earth can meet together. And the idea was like, so the spiritual beings of heaven could walk down to earth and see it. Except this one isn't a ziggurat. This one isn't like any stairway to any particular god or anything like that. This is God's stairway from earth to where Yahweh is up in heaven. And Jacob is seeing all this in a dream. He's seeing angels in a dream. Have you ever noticed that angels sometimes show up in dreams in the Bible? Yes. Where at? To Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph? Yeah. Joseph constantly sees angels in dreams. Um, we've also seen it in Genesis, I think, where Abraham sees the word of the Lord or the Lord show up in some way in dreams. So for them, like dreams are legitimate ways in which God speaks to them and mm -hmm. and sometimes they see angels in there. One of my one of my favorite stories of angels showing up in dreams is it's one of the times where one of the disciples, I think Peter, ends up in jail or whatever, and then like an angel comes to free him from jail. <laughs> And he he thinks it's a dream, so like he doesn't like react in the dream, but then the angel like kicks him or something, like, get up. <laughs> He's like, Oh, oh, it's actually here. <laughs> I, uh, in fact, I'm I just now that we're mentioning it, I, I kinda wanna find that story. Axe Angel Jail Dream. Acts twelve. Yeah, okay. So Acts twelve and Acts. 12 Peter's rescued uh, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries before the door regarding the prison behold an angel of the Lord not the angel an angel stood next to him and light shone in the cell he struck Peter on the side and woke him up saying get up quickly and chains fell off his hand and the angel said to him dress yourself and put on sandals and he did so and he said to him wrap your cloak around and follow me and he went out and followed him he did not know what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision <laughs> when they had passed the sign. So, like, in that case, Peter is so tired. He's like, what? Huh? Fuck? Okay. All right. And then he's, like, out of the jail. He's like, oh, that was real. <laughs> so, like, that shows you that Peter thought, like, he was mm -hmm. having a dream. Because he was sleeping at the time when the angel, like, poked him in the side. Like, get up. Yeah. So, so... Very clearly, from Old Testament and New Testament, it is thought sometimes you would come in contact with angels by dreaming, which to us sounds so unscientific and ethereal, but it happens throughout the Bible plenty of times to give evidence that that is actually something that does happen. All right, so stairway to heaven opens up. You look up, you see angels ascending and descending. And then at the top, it says, Behold, the Lord, that's all caps, so Yahweh, stood above it and said, I am the Lord, God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. So he sees the Lord standing above it, 
Can you see God? No. So there is a possibility, once again, who he's looking at could possibly be the angel of the Lord, mm -hmm. who is God. Um, now, is it weird that, like, when I'm picturing this, I'm kind of picturing it now with escalators and, like, somebody at the top, like, in between them? Yeah. And then there's escalators going up and down. I don't hey, know, Frank, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> at least that's what I'm imagining in my head right now, and it's a weird picture. Just getting back from Sodom and Gomorrah. What are you up to? Oh, yeah, I heard the news. <laughs> that's the way that came. Okay. <laughs> Casey's been watching too many Pixar movies. Um, Is there a lot of escalators in Pixar movies? Well, that most recent one. Talking about Soul? Yes. There's an escalator to heaven or whatever. Oh, okay. I gotcha. That's not really an escalator. It's just more like a slide. Like, it doesn't have steps. Fine, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> but God shows up, and so far when God has like shown up visually in some form, it has been the angel of the Lord, and we do have mentions of these angels being here. There's another reason we might think it's the angel too, is because here's what God is about to say. I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. You know, your dad. Uh, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring. Does this sound familiar? Yep. Has a has Jacob just basically the other day received the full blessing to be the one descendant to continue on the line of Abraham? Yeah. And now, what has been given to Abraham, and what was said to Isaac, is now being mm -hmm. said over Jacob. Uh, your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. Sounds familiar. You shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. And in you, your offspring, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's been said. Behold, I am with you. I will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So that's a pretty intense vision to have right there. Like Jacob wakes up, and he doesn't just think like this was just like a vision. Like he thinks it's innately connected to the spot that he is physically located in, which we've seen be important images throughout Genesis so far, right? Abraham runs into God at trees, sets up mm -hmm. altars there. Those are sacred sites where he believes God is more present or shows up in some way. And for Jacob, who has had really no spiritual conversation in his life in all of Genesis so far, he's just been an immoral deceiver of sorts. Like Jacob right now is having this moment where it's like, his heart is on fire. <laughs> this is like the first spiritual moment we've seen in Jacob's life. So far to us, he's almost seemed atheistic or like he does not know who God is or care. Like, yeah, I guess that's dad's thing or grandpa's thing. But well, I mean, I wouldn't say atheistic because he did say... There's no one in the Bible who is atheistic. They all believe that there were spiritual beings. But like in today's, the way that we look at it is like, He's got no connection spiritually to anything other than his parents' faith, right? Right. Yeah. But this moment goes beyond that. It's like he's really, like, his heart is set ablaze. He's surprised. How awesome is this place? Uh, none of, no one else in the Bible so far when they run into God, like, they always seem really, like, normal about it, right? Like, oh. Oh, God's here. You know, like, this is the first time where someone's reacted where we're like, yeah, this place is great. <laughs> you know, like, so he realizes, like, okay, there's actually, I know it sounds weird, but it sounds like this spot in which I'm in, there's like a portal within the spiritual realm that the angels go up and down right around here and get back and forth. Is that actually how it works? I don't know. We don't. We don't know. Most likely not. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, so far we've seen spiritual beings show up in physical locations, like specific physical locations. 
almost as though like the Oaks of Mamre especially like to get to Sodom and Gomorrah they walk through the Oaks first almost as though like yeah this is where we have one of the stairways <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it works. I haven't been to the spiritual realm. One day when we die, there will be a big ladder in front of Casey. And he'll <laughs> sigh heavily and say, I was Why looking for stairs. stairs? <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll really sigh and say, I was hoping for an escalator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, what I was thinking too. Uh, well, whatever the case... <laughs> this moment is a transition. He's in his low place. He's at the bottom. And just like Hagar, who's at her low moment, runs into the angel of the Lord, who then breathes life into her. So we have Jacob, who at his low moment, sleeping with a rock for a pillow, runs into the angel of the Lord or God in some way in a vision. And the promises... That were given to Abraham and partially given to Hagar and partially given to Isaac have now been extended into his life. And God has set this up. Uh, so early in the morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. This is similar to Abraham's always making these altars or like these markers of sacred spots. Jacob's now doing that too. Uh, he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at first. I don't know if this really matters or not, but Luz later in Jacob's story is going to be translated almond tree. And I wonder, like, was this place called Luz because there was a tree there? And would that not just match so much more of Genesis, how always at these tree sites, God shows up and it's like those tree sites are sacred sites? So maybe... Maybe he ran into a place famous for almond trees, but now he sees that it is a place connected, a sacred site connected to heaven, just like Abraham ran into terebinth trees and, and all these. Okay. Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in the way that I go, and give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I will come up again in my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. This is him. <laughs> like, is this a spiritual moment? Okay, I'll follow Yahweh, right? And this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all this, all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. I do have to say, I do find it very weird that he took his pillow and made it into like an altar. Like, here is my holy pillow in which I had the holy dream. And it is now anointed and holy. Like, It would actually make sense to me in our culture because we think of dreams is happening in the brain right and i just had my brain on this rock and now i'd be thinking this rock is now the sacred site in which my brain intersected with but i don't i don't think they thought the brain did all that back then so it didn't matter anything i just said <laughs> just uh yeah holy rock pillow just seems very weird to me also that's, a great that's my next band name right there. <laughs> we are Holy Rock Pillow. One, two, three, four. It's actually a really good band name. That is. I actually like that a lot. Uh, so there is... I'll, I'll end with a reference. As they were... As Jacob looked at this, behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Jesus is going to be talking to uh, a guy who was under a fig tree. Um later in John John 1 51 uh, a guy named Nathaniel and Jesus runs into Nathaniel and tells him truly truly I say to you you'll see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man that's an explicit reference back to this story so because I've said a hundred times that I see that the angel of the Lord and Jesus are like this connection from Old Testament angel of the Lord to Jesus New Testament I think it's interesting that you see angels ascending and descending in this story with the uh, angel of the Lord at the top and when you get to Jesus he quotes that passage as you will see the angels ascending and descending up this stairway Jacob's ladder Jacob's stairway to heaven with the son of man there with Jesus there 
So you see Jesus kind of making these connections. And you especially see it because he's quoting, this is John. John is the one who makes probably the most connections in the whole New Testament between the angel of the Lord of the Old Testament and Jesus in the New Testament. So it seems all the more so that John's probably making an intentional connection right there between that. But Jesus identifies himself. He's the one at the top of the ladder that Jacob saw. So that being said, we're closing out with the usuals. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. And you can hit the link down below to join us on the Discord if you'd like to continue these conversations further. And thanks for watching. <laughs>